dusty floor and I'm, I'm covered with fire in the spirit and I begin to see things in the audience. Like what? Well, I saw smaller fire angels the size of a person with fire about a, a foot coming out of them. They were joining in with the worship and the worship, the crowd looked like it was on fire. As it, as it was coming to be on fire, I saw a dark cloud roll in over the meeting. And I thought, well, that must be bad. Yeah. But, but the presence of the Lord was in the cloud. And I said, I'll have to look that up later, which I did. And throughout Exodus and Deuteronomy, we find the presence of the Father, uh, the Father God, when he shows up, is in a dark cloud. And so I see the Father show up in this meeting. And uh, we had tremendous healings break out during that day. Now, but, but what is going on with you when you're on the floor? <laughs> well, I'm laying there and I'm hearing in my heart, I hear the words new mantle. And I didn't see it, but I just heard new mantle. I start to feel water. It sounded so real in the natural. Uh, it felt so real. I was looking at the front row thinking, who's splashing water on me? And trying to figure this out in the natural. And so uh, I didn't know until later, I actually caught up with Davi Silva and I said, okay, I'm gonna be a little scientific here. You tell me what you saw tonight. So Davi shared with me everything I just shared with you, but he also added that the, the angel, when he touched me, he threw a mantle over me and it had fire coming off the top and it had water dripping off the bottom, which was the water that I felt splashing across me. Well, you know what I think is so amazing is that everything that you were seeing in the spirit, he saw the same thing. Yes. Now, did who told who first? Well, I said, uh, being scientific, I'm going to have him share with me because I wanted to confirm yeah. what I had seen. So he shared first, and uh, uh, and it confirmed everything that I had seen that evening. Now, this new mantle that you received. I mean, some amazing things are going on in your life. Tell me about this woman with ovarian cancer. Oh, this was amazing. This, this last summer I was out in Washington State and uh, I got a call that there was a lady who's uh, 83 who was dying of stage four ovarian cancer. And uh, they asked if I would come and pray. And so I drove out to where she was. Uh, she, she had just started her second round of chemotherapy. She had had her ovary removed, and they said, they closed her back up and said, we got 90% of it, but the other 10 we can't operate on. You have four months to live. Just go home, do the chemo, but it's, it's not gonna help. You're, you're too old. And uh, I talked to her and said, you know, the Lord will take you home, but he wants to take you home with dignity. He doesn't want to take you home with cancer. That's not how the Lord works when he takes people home. And so we agreed together and there were some, some objects in the spirit that we prayed through, some forgiveness prayers and some uh, prayers about fear for her grandkids. And so we prayed those through for about an hour. And uh, we didn't see anything tremendous happen at that moment, but I got a call two weeks later. She went into her doctor two weeks later. He came in with a chart and he said, I don't know quite how to tell you this, but you're 100% cancer free. Mm. Well, you know what? I believe that's going to be someone's report that's watching us right now. The Lord does not want to take you home with cancer. Cancer is not from him. Would you pray right now that cancer leave? Absolutely. If you have cancer, would you just place your hand wherever that is right now? And we speak to that cancer in Jesus' name. We command you to die. We command that cancer to leave your body. I speak heaven into your body, that it would be on earth as it is in heaven. There is no cancer in heaven, and we command that cancer to dry up and be gone. I speak health by the power of the Holy Spirit. I speak health into your body in Jesus' name right now. And when you do the, uh, the activation exercises and read this book by Jonathan Welton, Devil, watch out. You're on notice because your discernment of spirit is going to grow. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Jonathan Welton. And Jonathan, I'm so intrigued when you see objects over people and you've learned over time what these objects mean. 
But I love it when you see sometimes a baby over a couple. Tell me about mm. that. Uh, sometimes I'll see in the spirit, I'll see a little, a little boy or a little girl um, maybe standing next to the mother, uh, sometimes uh, holding the hand of the mother. And, and, of course, they're not seeing it, but something I'm seeing in the spirit. And uh, usually if I ask the couple, uh, are you wanting to have children, are you trying to have children, usually the situation is that they're trying to, but they can't. Physically, they're barren and they're, they're trying, but they, they haven't received um, a child yet. And so uh, there have been many cases where I've prayed for those individuals and uh, they ended up having a child of the same gender that I saw in the spirit even beforehand. You know, the first time I had never heard this story like that, so it stretched me quite a bit when the Lord started doing that. Now, tell me some other objects you might see in the spirit above someone or by someone. Um, well, I've seen uh, a lot of things with neck injuries. Uh, I'll see a collar around their neck. Uh, sometimes there's a spike in the collar, and I'll say, do you have a pain right here? Or, you know, I'll point to where it is, and they'll well, say, Well, that yeah. makes it so easy. Like, I get words of knowledge, but I'd rather get sight of knowledge. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It says... It makes uh, it easier. You know, this is available to everybody, because it says in Hebrews 5.14, we're to have our senses exercised to discern. So everybody's supposed to be able to do that. And our spiritual senses, we have five of them just like we have in our natural body, and sight is one of those five. So we should all be able to do this to one degree or another. Okay, it's the thought crossed my mind a little earlier. When Davy Silva prayed for you, his prayer was, give him what I have. Would you pray that prayer right now for those that are hungry in the, our audience? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you would place your hands over your eyes right now as I pray for you. Wait a second, take my glasses off. I want to do that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Revelation 3.19 says there's an anointing for the eyes that they would see. And many times as I pray for you right now, you'll probably feel heat in your eyes. This is a sign of the Lord touching you. I speak over your eyes right now in Jesus' name that you would receive an activation of your spiritual eyes that they would begin to function, that they would begin to open, that they would begin to operate as they never have before, that you'd have discerning of spirits released in your life, that you'd move up into this gift, that you'd bring healing to others, healing to yourself, and that you'd be able to release the presence of the Holy Spirit over your eyes right now. I speak that in Jesus' name. Well, well you know what I, I believe? Do you remember when Jonathan said he could see light or darkness over someone, whether they were a believer or not. What's around you? Is there light around you? Or is there darkness around you? Here's the good news. If you have light, you can have more of God. I mean, it's there's so much more. That's why you watch this television show. But if you have darkness, it's a great darkness. And there, there's a division coming in the world right now. I mean, the world is divided, but it's going to be even more divided. And the question is, do you want the creator of the universe to be your best friend, to love you, and his light to just radiate and radiate and radiate out? Of course you do. Of course you do. You were created for this. It's in your DNA to have a relationship with God. The only way to God is through the King of the Jews, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. Believe that Jesus took your sins upon himself and by his blood your sins were obliterated. They're washed away. You're clean. You're right. Righteous in God's sight. And if you're righteous, ask him to live inside. If you with your mouth out loud, it's so simple. You need help to be confused. You know it all. You know everything that's necessary. Say that prayer right now. Tell God you love him and watch him love you. Experience his love right now.